Hello and welcome to Sea of Nerves, the podcast that helps you navigate life's storms and to develop practices to support your own worthiness and love. Are you ready to embark on this healing journey together? Throughout this podcast, we'll explore the challenges and triumphs of coping with grief and trauma, and we'll explore and provide you with tools and practices to help you navigate the rough seas of life. As we embark on this journey together, I invite you to imagine a sea of nerves within you, a vast and powerful force that allows you to be yourself, to navigate any storm that comes your way. Throughout this podcast, we'll explore how to tap into that sea of nerves and unleash your full potential, even in the face of adversity. So grab a life jacket and let's sip sail. Together, we'll discover the strength and resilience within you and chart a course towards healing and growth. Welcome. I'm your host, Arian. In today's episode, we're going to talk about a powerful tool for coping with grief and trauma, depression. But before we dive into our topic, let's take a moment to just center ourselves with a quick breathing exercise. So let's close our eyes, take a deep breath in, hold your breath for a moment, and then release it. Letting go of any tension or stress you may be holding on to. Take another deep breath in, feeling the oxygen flow into your body, and exhale slowly, feeling a sense of calm wash over you. Do this a few more times at your pace. So now that we're centered and focused, let's ex- <laughs> let's explore how depression can be a useful tool for navigating the stormy seas of grief and trauma. In last week's episode, we covered our tides of transformation when dealing with the negotiating side of grief. But what happens when negotiating moves into depression? Grief and depression are two distinct experiences, but they can share some similarities. It's common for people who are grieving to feel sad, hopeless, even fatigued. However, grief is typically a temporary response to a loss, whereas depression is a mental health condition and it can last for months or years. And negotiating with grief is a natural process of adapting to any kind of loss. It involves an experience of a range of emotions, such as sadness, anger, guilt, regret. It can really take time to adjust to life after any kind of loss, whether it's health-related, career-related, um, a, a person you loved or a friend or um, anything in that kind of nature. And the process can be painfully, like painful and challenging. However, if we're able with time and support, most of us can come to terms with a certain loss and continue to live our fulfilling lives. Depression, on the other hand, is a mental health condition that involves persistent feelings of sadness, hopelessness, and a loss of interest in any activities that once brought you pleasure. It can even cause physical symptoms such as fatigue and changes in appetite and sleeping patterns, or even difficulty in concentrating. Depression can really interfere with daily life and make it difficult to carry out everyday activities. As it's normal to experience grief after any kind of loss, and negotiating with grief is a healthy and necessary process. However, 
if our grief begins to interfere with our daily life and or last longer than expected, it may be a sign of depression. And while it's important to allow yourself to negotiate with the grief and the experience that you're going through and the range of the emotions it comes with, it's also very crucial to mental or prioritize your mental health. And if necessary, make sure to seek out professional help just so that way they can provide you with as much of the best treatment options that maybe you didn't even know were available to you that they could bring to light to you. But please remember too that there's no timeline for grieving And each one of us is going to have a different experience because they're each unique. And we can't compare our grief journey to others or put pressure on ourselves to just, quote, get over it, unquote. (laughs) Especially within a certain timeline, that's just unrealistic. Instead, it's better if we focus on our self-care such as getting enough sleep or exercising, eating well, seeking out those supportive relationships you really need to help you get through this process. And make sure it's the right people too. And when I say right people, it took me a long time to understand what right people meant. And right people are the people that make you see, make you feel seen, validated, and heard. These people can be anyone, and these people are your supportive group, or your, whatever you want to name them, I'm just, I'm giving it a name, but those people will really help you, and make sure it's those people that line up with your values that gives you the respect you deserve when you're feeling these feelings. Not not the people that don't help you. And I know that I've struggled with this. When going through a grieving process, you can feel alone. And sometimes it's because we've outgrown the people who used to once comfort us. We've outgrown the people that once used to comfort us. So now we have to seek new people. And I know that's not easy when you're dealing with something. But it could be something fun to focus on. Hey, I have new friends. I have new family members. I have new people who love, support, and respect and see me as who I am. And they're coming to me right now even though I don't feel it. Now that's the mindset we have to try to commit to. And with that process, with time and patience, and as I said, that commitment, You can emerge from this grief, your grief, stronger and more resilient than before. Think of depression as a deep, dark ocean. It can be overwhelming and isolating, right? Much like even diving into the depths of the sea. And when we experience grief, it's like a storm hitting the ocean's surface stirring up all the powerful emotions, the waves. The storm can create chaos and turbulence within the within the actual ocean. And that's exactly what grief does. It disrupts our emotional state and it leaves us lost and confused. And over time, even though if the storm passes, the ocean's going to still carry that effect, the effects of those disturbances for quite some time. And similar, similarly, I always have a problem with that word. I don't know why. Leave me a DM if you have a problem with that word. Just saying. Let me know I'm not alone. <laughs> similarly, while grief may eventually lessen in intensity, it actually can leave us feeling uh, less... What am I trying to say? It can feel us feeling, <laughs> I'm not as feel this feeling, <laughs> that's part of my dystonia, it confuses what I want to say, it just re-scrambles my words, 
If you have dystonia, know that's a common symptom and it's totally okay. We do not need to be perfect with our sentences. If we mix up and jamble our words, it happens. No one's perfect. No one's perfect. We can try to be excellent though. That's something worth striving for. <laughs> Wherever I last left off since I couldn't get my sentence out. <laughs> I know that with the intensity that comes with grief, it can leave a lasting impact on our mental health, which potentially leads into a chronic depression. I did it. My brain was trying to say that and that whole, I think it took a whole minute for my brain to finally manage to say what I wanted to say. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. But to bring it back into our navigating our oceans, right? It's similar. Because just as we navigate the ocean with care and caution, we have to approach our mental health with that same mindfulness and self-care to manage the potential effects of depression and grieving continuing and really messing with our mental health. And that's what we're going to cover in this episode of Sea Nerves. We're going to explore the various symptoms of depression, address the stigma associated with mental health, and discuss how depression is a vital and positive stage of grief in order for us to cope and heal to find our inner love and peace in the midst of life storms. I want to first take a second to address the stigma associated with seeking help for mental health issues. I feel it's an important part of promoting promoting, promoting mental health and well-being. As despite the progress made in recent years, there's still a persuasive stigma attached to seeking help for mental health issues. And this stigma can prevent people from seeking the help they need. And ultimately that just leads to more feelings of shame and isolation. And I want to, one way I want to address the stigma is just acknowledging that seeking help for mental health issues is a sign of freaking strength. You know what? Fuck that. Fucking strength. It's a sign of goddamn fucking strength. I'm not going to withhold me myself here. That is a sign of so much strength when you ask for help because you know you want to better yourself. Hell Yeah. Don't you dare let anyone fucking tell you that it's different because you are so strong for seeking that help. And hell yeah, I just rose to like level 10 passionate because I am ready to end this stigma. As it's nowhere close to being a sign of weakness to ask for help. And if you're like me, I know many of us grew up this way. I know lots of us, generations, I'm talking generations of us have grown up this way. But that's where it needs to end. It ends today, it ends now, because we evolve as humans, and our society needs to evolve in this manner as well. And that's why I want to say that it's not a weakness, and it keeps a lot of people from thinking it. They don't want to speak up because they feel they're being weak. And as we seek medical care, if we broke our leg, we'd go seek a doctor to go fix it. This is no different, no different. Seeking mental health care is a proactive step towards managing our overall health and well-being. And it's important to remind ourselves and others that mental health issues are common and very treatable. And that seeking help is very brave and necessary towards recovery. And it's not, you're not wrong for having mental health issues. Every single person in this world is dealing with mental health issues. The pandemic showed us that. It's time we evolved. It's 2023. The pandemic's been over for three years now. We need to evolve and get this, this cultural stigma and lack of resources out of here. And addressing this stigma by talking openly and honestly about our mental health issues. Fuck 
the small talk, man. Fuck that small talk. Fuck how you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. Okay, see you later. Bye. How are you doing today? How is life going for you today? Are you feeling okay? There's so many more questions we can ask each other. Hey, what's your favorite song today? What what song are you feeling? Instead of, hey, how are you? Why has our small talk not changed while we're evolving so much? That's my new question that I've been for reframing. And I hope this podcast changes some social, social ways we communicate with each other. Because that's ultimately what I want to provide. Because... We deserve it. We deserve to share our own experiences and speak up about the importance of mental health so we can reduce the stigma and create a goddamn more supportive and accepting environment, especially for those who need help. This is especially important for all of us individuals who may face additional additional barriers to access care, um, like your mental like like health like therapy like we don't all have that access and so that's where the stigma needs to change we need to be having access to this and i know it's one thing to preach it and i i hope that in actions i can build this stigma away as well but either way ultimately it's important to remember that seeking help for mental health issues is absolutely normal and it's a necessary part of taking care of ourselves. And let's keep challenging the stigma and promote a culture of acceptance and support where we can create a world where mental health care is accessible to everyone and available to everyone who needs it. On this topic, I love this quote. It's from American actress and mental health advocate Glenn Close, who said... What mental health needs is more sunlight, more candor, and more unshamed conversation. This quote speaks to me so deep. It's so perfect on the importance of openness and honesty when it comes to mental health and how it can be a positive thing. Depression doesn't need to be looked at as a negative thing. It's actually a positive thing. So then you know what a goddamn good day looks like. And if we bring mental health issues out into the open and speak candidly about our experiences, we'll be able to create a more supportive and understanding environment. I used to feel like I had to put on a fake mask and pretend like everything was okay. I'm still doing it, even though it's not. That's why a lot of us are like, yeah, but you don't look sick. Um... And we get all pissy because we don't feel that way. But we're also putting on a fake charade, you know? We're the ones putting on the fake smile. We're the ones not going, yeah, well, it took me (laughs) five hours to get here because that's how much energy I had to store up in order to get my battery recharged to get here. So if we had that supportive culture, it wouldn't make saying that as hard. It wouldn't make seeing illnesses so hard. And I say that because I still do it. I still put up a fake front. I get mad when people don't understand what I go through. Um, and that's not the, I'm not saying it's the correct way to be. I'm not saying it's the right or wrong way to be. But it is, it's a way for I don't want to feel anyway. I, I felt ashamed for not being positive or in a good mood. And I was always worried people wouldn't want to be around me or like me if I wasn't happy and upbeat. I'd tell myself I had to hide my true feelings because I didn't want to burden others or risk them not liking me because I was having a bad day. And that's that's the social norm right now. And that's where I'm not okay with it. Because I've learned that this just isn't how it should be. It's okay to not be okay. And it's important to be honest about how we're feeling, even if it's not a fucking positive thing, even if we're not happy. By speaking up about our struggles and being vulnerable with each other, we can break this stigma and create a more accepting and supporting culture. It's time to shift these cultural norms, um, these society norms. They need to embrace a new normal 
where we can be our authentic selves, even when we're not feeling our best. That's what I'm striving for. Even in this podcast episode, even in this whole entire podcast, because nobody is there to help us work through these phases of grief. Well, not so now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got me. You got me. I'm here for you. Right here. Right now. Here. Right now. Here. And now. I'm going to probably, probably get copyrighted because I like sang that song so perfectly. Just kidding. <laughs> And I just want to say that through my own experience, I've come to, to understand how difficult it can be to navigate, <laughs> let it go, these complex emotions that come with grief. It can be a long and difficult process. And if we don't have the tools or support we need to cope, it's possible for grief to turn into depression. And I want to talk about a few ways that can happen. I understanding the ways in which these two experiences can intersect, we can better equip ourselves with the tools to cope and heal. But as we've only scratched the surface of this important topic, I invite you to join me in part two of this episode, where we'll dive deeper into practical ways to cope and move forward on your healing journey. Don't miss out on the opportunity to gain a deeper understanding of this crucial aspect of the grieving process with depression. See you in part two.